Hi, the contents of this video could actually change your results completely, or the results you get from practicing, because of course we need to practice in order to master this instrument. But how we practice and how we look at practicing is really what's going to determine whether you succeed or not, uh, and not the practice itself. Because most people, they think about, okay, there's so such a lot of things to practice here, so we need to do a little each day. We need to do a little each week. We need to keep a wheel going of, of, of little skills that I practice over and over and over again, and then eventually I'll re reach that point where I have mastery over all these areas that I'm practicing constantly. And this is, by far, the worst way of attacking practicing. It doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of things that really benefit from you doing it every day, but those things have a special uh, quality to them, and, and the, the ability to distinguish between what needs focus, what's, what needs hours of persistence each day, and what needs to be repeated just for a couple of minutes each day, that ability to do that selection of what you need to do is really important, but we'll get back to that. The first thing I need to say here is that when you start using focus it completely changes your results. And the reason is simple, is because focus is really a magnifying glass. You, 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 you put a, a, a magnifying glass between the sun and the ground, and suddenly you can, you can burn through stuff. The sun that, that seems warm and nice and, and comfortable to be in, it suddenly becomes something very <laughs> mean and destructive. Uh, and that's really what focus does to you when you start using it. It, it burns through instead of giving you that warm, uh, gentle improvement of your skills each day. And this is, this, is my, my, um, this is my case here. If you don't use focus, you will absolutely never reach the skill level that you want. If you, need, if you want the skill level of being able to do something extraordinary on this instrument, you can become good by practicing a little each day. You can... You can use, learn to you play licks and chords and play music, but if you want to really increase your skill level to the, to the place where you can do rapid alternate picking or you really master left and right hand technique, you really need to use focus. And if you don't want that blazing technique and you don't want those uh, uh, alien-like skills, then you can use focus to progress much faster and get to that point where you can really you master the things you want to master much faster. So what is it? Well, you know the feeling of being confused and just, ah, there's so much to practice here. You know, you, what, what should I, I need to, I need to learn how to make a, pr uh, create a practice schedule, right? I need to be very good at, at knowing what to practice and when, and then I need to put together a rather complex plan of practicing that I'll then follow for a couple of days and then not follow through on because it's too complex. Right? What you need instead is a simple rule. You need a rule of how to focus. And that's a very simple, simple process. The hard thing about it is to use it every day, every week, and every month, all the time. Even when you're not that motivated to practice, you still use that technique. So the first step you must take is to become very good at using that technique of focus. And the way to do that is to constantly remind yourself of doing it until it becomes automatic. And this might you know, take you months before it's automatic. But once you get the results of, of, of acting that way and thinking that way, you'll get addicted to it. And you won't be able to stop using it all the time because it really, it feels like that's the thing you need to do to get the result that you want. And so what is it? Okay, let me get to the point here. It's very, very, very simple. You, you just decide. You have all these things that is in front of you, practicing all kinds of stuff, you know, soloing, courts, technique, all kinds of stuff, scales. And what you do is that you focus on two things. First, you ask yourself, what would I benefit the most from learning? What's my weakest spot here? If I was in a band, you know, with playing with people, where would I fall through? What's the thing that, you know, I have to do, be able to do some rhythms some riffing, some chords. I have to be able to, to use rhythm, right? in my body, I have to play those grooves, I have to uh, solo perhaps, play a solo, uh, and what, where are my weak spots here? And you can keep on constantly asking yourself that question. That's the first guide that you use in order to figure out what to focus on. The second guide is, what am I passionate about? 
And this is actually much more important than the first. And this is where people start all the time, is that they focus on what does my reasonable mind of logic and intelligence tell me to focus on, and then they try to go for that thing, but they fail to do it because they don't, they're not passionate about it. And so the world is not ruled by intelligence. We, we, we wish it were, and we would like it to be, but what it's ruled by is emotion. Where there's emotion, people do stuff. Things happen, right? So what you really need to ask yourself is, why, why, what am I the most interested in? What am I the most passionate about? And then run for that thing. And you might you know, let yourself be influenced by your intelligence and what might be the most productive thing to, to focus on. But don't don't uh, choose one over the other. Don't choose intelligence over emotion. Focus on what you're the most passionate about, what looks the most exciting, and then focus. If you think a hundred things are the most exciting, then you have a problem because you need to pick one thing. Every single week, every single month, you need to pick one thing and say, okay, what am, and this is the question, what am I going to focus on for this week? What am I going to use 75 to 80% of my practice time on this week? And then you follow through on that. And the most the easiest thing to follow through on is what you're most passionate about, what you're most interested, excited about. And then you, 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 you kind of glance over at the other finger here and say, okay, what would be uh, the most, can I be passionate about what's most productive? What, can I be passionate about building my weakest skill here? And if you can't, there's just no, there's no self-discipline to drive that. You can start it, but you'll fall through every time. So uh, you need to see if you can combine the two, and if you can't, just go for passion. But that's the, that's the whole question. That's the habit. And I used to do that all the time. What, what one thing will I focus on for this week? What one thing will I focus on this entire month or for these four weeks? And then I used to sometimes measure where I was, uh, you know, how fast could I play this or, or this one string alternate picking thing. <laughs> Right? And it was simple things like that, because this is f about focus, right? Or how fast can I go between and have a clean chord every time, depending on, you know, what level can I play that as? And you use the metronome to measure yourself if you want to. This is very effective. And then you, you just focus on this insanely for a week. Getting it right until you can... Just doing that, just focusing on, on a simple thing like that and getting that up to speed, being able to tap your foot, playing a simple rhythm and really mastering it for once. Instead of dabbling with a lot of small stuff, you really focus on mastering something simple in a week, in a month. Or if you're, if you're trying to work on your legato skills, you just do this. You just do this for hours, one week. And, you, and as you practice, you get really excited about what that will do to your body and brain and what results you really create here. And you enjoy the process of repeating the same freaking thing over and over again, thousands or millions of times. Because that's the way of getting to that place where you can just, la la, do it without thinking about it. Or you can rock, you know, instead of having, and you can see that on people. You can see that kind of feeling they have in their body when they really master it. Because it becomes unconscious. It becomes like a dance when they do it. It's effortless. And that's the point you want to get to with anything that you practice. So this is my simple rule here. This has been too long a video already. But simple rule, practice focusing on what am I going to focus 75 to 80% of my time on this week and then follow through on it. And if you can't follow through for an entire week and you find yourself falling off the wagon constantly after three days, then you just need to ask yourself, what am I going to focus on for the next three days, right? And then just work with yourself instead of against yourself. And if you can do a whole week, then just imagine what could you achieve by focusing on the same little thing for two weeks, right? And then ask yourself and then follow through. And you have to do this over and over again. You have to shift your focus from becoming good at playing guitar to becoming good at practicing, becoming good at focusing. So, and as you do that, you become good at playing guitar, right? You, you do nothing but focus on, okay, how can I remember to ask myself that question? Where can I write down what my weekly focus is? And then make sure I remember it. And every time you fall off the wagon, you don't go, oh, I did it again. I can't follow through on anything. I lack self-discipline. I'll never master this instrument. 
That's not the way to go. You know, you have to learn to focus. So each time you fall off the wagon, you just go right back at it and say, okay, what can I focus on these two days? What can, how can I do this better next time, right? So never, never start attacking yourself. So decide what are you going to spend your time on this week? 75 to 80% of your time goes into that activity. And how narrow, how focused can it be? How can you create a real result that you can really hear and feel after that week? And which left leaves us uh, with the remaining 20 to 25%. And that's the time you use to repeat little stuff. You know, working on fretboard shapes, just remembering them. Uh, every time you pick up your guitar, for instance, and then playing through you know, two fretboard shapes, combining them, whatever you're working on, that visual remembering stuff, it really benefits from you just focusing a little on it each day. And so you might have a little routine every time you pick up your guitar, you just do that. Or you might have something else, you might have a couple of chords or a chord that you really like to learn. Eh. And you just do two minutes of that each day, you know. Or you start practicing something that you know you're going to focus on obsessively in a week or two weeks, right? So you, you kind of cheat in advance and, and start practicing so you become really good at it. Um, so every time you need to remember something, like a chord progression, a song, a riff, that's a really a, a good thing to practice a little each day. But then use 75 to 80% of your time on something very focused, focused technique, chords, whatever it is. Uh, and that will absolutely change the whole game of practicing. And then you start to master things. And as you know, if you've been watching my other videos about mastery, once you start to master a little, it becomes very easy to master the next thing and even easier to master the next thing and the next thing. And that's how you develop an incredible amount of skills in, in a short period of time. It's not by trying to master it all at one time. You actually go for mastery by focusing.